An old couple hires you to babysit a doll. You quickly learn there's more than meets the eye. Our story begins with Greta on her way to meet the Hillshires and their son, Brahms. She arrives to an opulent mansion and we get our first look at the boy in the form of a painting. She gets herself sorted in her room when suddenly... <laughs> that was a little overdramatic. Got the slow-mo and everything. Greta gets acquainted with the self-proclaimed grocery boy, Malcolm. He attempts to put the moves on Greta by charmingly pretending to be a psychic. I have a gift. Some people read palms, and I can read gum. He gives his skills a shot with Greta, and in the process, we learn a bit more about her. Though he botches his first attempt, we can tell by Greta's facial expression that his second go was right on the money. On the run from someone, are we? Okay, I'm going to be copying that accent from now on. Miss Heelshire arrives and kindly greets Greta. <laughs> Where are your shoes? Apparently, they've gone missing, which she attributes to the playful antics of Brahms. I think it's about time we meet the fellow. Daddy. No, not him. Him. <laughs> You having a giggle, mate? <clears throat> Malcolm eases the tension with a quick reading before leaving. Realizing this is not a joke, Greta plays along. She then heads to Brahms' room with Miss Hilshire. Along the way, she states that they've had a number of nannies come and go, but none were quite as young and pretty as Greta. Greta is made to practice dressing Brahms while facing intense scrutiny from Miss Hilshire. He's not a baby, Miss Evans. You needn't be so delicate. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, my boy likes poems. You do poems? I know all the words to green eggs and ham. <laughs> I love Dr. Seuss. Uh-oh, Brahms. Keep your shit solid, man. Next up is music. It's his world. He likes it rather louder than I prefer. The trio has lunch, and Brahms is looking dapper as ever as he eyes Greta. Afterwards, Mr. Heelshire shows her another one of her duties, tending to the traps. The missus is convinced the rats will get into the walls, and also, Brahms doesn't like animals. He's very shy. Mr. Heelshire concludes their chat by mentioning he knows this all looks rather odd. However... It's important she understands that despite appearances, Brahms is very much still with them. Do you understand? We cut to the peculiar parents praying and manifesting good vibes with Brahms. God bless Greta. Sus. They request some privacy, then emerge with good news. Congratulations. Brahms has chosen you. Yay. Later at night, Greta calls her sister and reveals her apprehensive feelings. Oh, and the fact that the kid is a freaking doll. Yeah, but you need to get away and start fresh, she replies. They then briefly discuss Cole, Greta's abusive ex. He's persistent as ever, despite their restraining order. Greta urges her sister not to engage. The next morning, she overhears some rumblings and investigates. Wait till I tell Daddy! Looks like Brahms was acting a fool, probably upset that his parents are leaving. Mr. Hillshire shares a set of rules with Greta before the couple prepares to depart. I'm so sorry. Wow, this movie is subtle. Now that they're gone, Greta covers up the creepy boy and settles in. She checks her phone to find no service, then makes some PB&J and enjoys it with a glass of grape juice. She has herself a nappy, then awakens a bit later. She heads downstairs and finds that Brahms has been uncovered. Spooky. <coughs> oh, I don't think Brahms liked that. In the middle of the night, a child's cries echo throughout the building. A startled Greta awakens and investigates. As she makes her way through the halls, the sounds increase in intensity. She's drawn towards the painting of Brahms and inspects it closely. Now I know what you're thinking. There's probably gonna be a jump scare. <laughs> Got him. Greta awakens again. So that was a dream, which means she was dreaming about dreaming, which means this takes place in the Inception universe. Fun fact, Leonardo DiCaprio played Brahms. Yep, it's really him under there. Anyway, Greta breathes a sigh of relief, but then the crying begins again. She gets up and checks on Brahms. He's crying. She wipes away his tears, then finds it's just a leak. In an effort to check on things, she grabs his pokey stick and tries to open the attic, but fails. Then, she attempts to give her sis a call, but ends up having to leave a message instead. Right after, the phone rings and Greta picks up. Massimo. The only response she gets is breathing. And whatever that was. The next day, Malcolm stops by for his weekly delivery and tries to shoot his shot once more. Eh, maybe next time, pal. Greta inquires about Brahms' story, and then the pair take a trip to his tombstone. Brahms died in a fire on his eighth birthday, and the doll turned up not long after. Malcolm shoots his shot again and gets declined again. To be fair, Greta did just get out of a relationship, which she reveals. Malcolm counters by spinning their potential date as a professional courtesy. I guess they do have the same boss. Greta finally gives in and agrees. See, fellas? Persistence is key. Back at the mansion, Greta prepares for her date while on the phone with her sis. She picks out a nice dress before having a little spook when she spots Brahms peeking. She shuts the door, then treats herself to a shower. Meanwhile, Brahms is up to no good. You're a little peeper, aren't you? After comping a peek or two, Brahms snatches Greta's dress and necklace. She exits the shower and damn... She kind of thick. Greta notices her items are missing and makes her way to her room while dread fills her body. To her shock, all her clothes are missing. Brahms, you little rascal. She exits her room to find that the attic is open. She arms herself, then climbs up. 
Hello? Uh-oh. Fortunately, Greta hears Malcolm pull up, so she tries to get his attention. Stepbrother, I'm stuck. Try as she might, her screams go unanswered. As Malcolm departs, Greta is forced to face the darkness alone. <laughs> Suddenly, Greta realizes it's her bedtime and promptly goes to sleep. She wakens the next morning to find her late night spook was merely a jacket. Then, she rummages around and finds some pictures of Brahms back when he was human. Huh, this is like Instagram versus real life. She returns to her room to find her clothes returned. Made a bit of a mess, didn't we, Brahms? Malcolm stops by and is like, what was you doing up there? Then, we get a closer look at Brahms' set of rules. Hmm. Greta then steals a glance from Brahms before we cut to her and Malcolm playing pool. He's agreed to stick around for a bit to keep her safe. She asks more about Brahms, and Malcolm reveals that there's two sides to the story. Some say that Brahms was a lovely lad, while others say he was quite the opposite. He also shares that during one of his deliveries, he found Mr. Heelshire off his rocker, having had too much to drink. They chatted, and he asked what Brahms was really like. He only got a one-word response. Odd. We see that Brahms is actually able to hear everything due to the speaking tube situated throughout the house. Fun fact, these were a real thing. Later at night, Greta is brushing her teeth when a shadow lurks just behind her. She checks up on Brahms and finds that the floor is littered with copies of his rules. Ugh, stop staring at me, Brahms. No. Oh boy, another dream. How many layers deep are we this time? Greta gets up to find her shoes from earlier returned. How thoughtful. She visits Brahms and we see him proudly sitting tall. <sighs> okay, but actually, he's kind of upset. Greta had accepted the terms of conditions and yet is clearly violating the guidelines. She gets scared with the whole situation and runs off to her room. Unfortunately, the phone isn't working. Suddenly, it rings. Huh? Story recapped here. She throws away the phone. Then, Brahms' feet appear just under the door. He drops something off and says, I promise I'll be good. Greta slowly opens the door and finds some munchies. As an avid enjoyer of PB&J, she becomes overwhelmed with joy. <laughs> In all seriousness, I think she's come to believe that Brahms is a peaceful spirit. She gets face to face with him and agrees to follow his rules. As you can tell, this brings him a great deal of happiness. We then check up on the Heelshires. They're seen writing a letter for Brahms before Daddio announces, it's time. The couple heads outside and spontaneously decides to take a swim. However, their attention is quickly stolen by a pair of rocks, which they promptly collect. We're just having a wee swim. Back to Greta, we see that she started to follow Brahms' orders. She feeds him, plays Sycomodromo Bamba, reads him stories, and ducks him into bed. One day while playing piano for baby Brahms, Malcolm storms in. He's sad that she's kind of ghosting him, so he decided to stop by a little earlier this week to check up on her. He then drops off the Heelshire letter before the pair, or rather, trio, have lunch. He notes that Greta is getting along rather well with Brahms, then, once again, asks her out on a date. She declines, stating that she can't leave Brahms. Oh, you wouldn't mind, would you, Brahms? Yeah, it's still a no, no from me, dog. dog. Malcolm heads off, then a frustrated Greta tries to get a reaction out of Brahms. No! Mommy, chill. She goes to throw away his food, and in that moment, Brahms moves. Greta calls Malcolm back, and of course, he hurriedly returns to the manor. She reveals to him that Brahms is alive, but he's quick to dismiss it. All right, well, I've set up a very scientific test here. We draw chalk around Brahms, then walk away and hope he moves. Let's give it a shot. They head to another room, then Greta knocks on the walls to signal Brahms. No dice. Okay, okay, okay. This time, it'll really work. She whispers to Brahms and warns that she really needs him to do this, or she'll be forced to leave. They run off, she knocks, and the spirit reveals itself. I was shy. He really moved. Told you so. The pair heads out for a little walk, and Greta opens up about her abusive ex, Cole. She was actually pregnant around the time they broke up. However, Cole caused her to lose the baby. Heartbroken, she took this job in another country in an attempt in an attempt to get away. Greta states that she now feels a motherly connection to Brahms. Just like the Heelshires, she knows what it's like to lose a child, and feels as though Brahms chose her for this reason. Let's go! My man's is finally in! But baby Bromsey needs a little kissy too. God bless Bromsey. Greta and Malcolm head back to her room to study anatomy, though things are cut short by the sudden rumblings of loud music. They head to the living room to find Brahms, back at it again. Brahms, could you stop being such a clamshackle? In other words, a sea blocker. Later, the pair chat and Malcolm is clearly upset. He advises her to get some perspective on the situation, but Greta believes she's already seeing things clearly. She won't be leaving Brahms. With no other option, Malcolm shares a dark tale. Brahms used to have a friend, Emily, who was found dead shortly after attending his birthday party. By the time the authorities arrived, the place was already up in flames. Brahms hears everything. After Malcolm leaves, Greta tucks him in, then visits the attic to further inspect his photos. He finds pictures of Emily and Brahms together. Perhaps the stories are true, though she doesn't pay them much mind and continues with her duties. One day, while heading back inside to make some food, 
Greta overhears someone playing pool in the house. Uh-oh, it's Cole, and he's Chad. After taking in the fact that this kid is actually a doll, he realizes that snatching Greta up will be rather easy, or so he thinks. The trio have dinner, and Cole states, I bought the tickets, we're heading out tomorrow. Suddenly, Malcolm arrives. Awkward. There isn't really anything he can do, so he kinda just leaves. What a beta male. <laughs> Meanwhile, Brahms gives Cole the stanky eye. As Greta heads off to bed, Cole grabs her and says, you're not getting away from me, and I'm not letting you go. In bed, Greta assures Brahms she won't leave, but she's gonna need his help. We also see that our knight in shining armor, Malcolm, is sleeping in his car, just in case things get rowdy overnight. Later in the night, Greta is awakened. Cole is screaming her name and holding a bundle of dead rats. Blood adorns the wall, spelling, get out. And Brahms is seen ominously sitting. Tensions escalate, and Malcolm pulls up. But he's all bark and no bite. He stands idly by as Cole swings Brahms back and forth. The walls begin to rattle and rumble as the spirit of Brahms powers up. Cole, with his 200 IQ, leans his ear against a mirror. A voice emerges from within the walls. Greta. And then, the truth is revealed. Brahms is a Discord moderator. He's been living within the walls this entire time, watching, stalking, and waiting. He overpowers Cole and lays him to rest. Then, the chase is on. Greta and Malcolm run away, but Brahms is in hot pursuit. The pair manages to find their way into the walls and stumble upon Brahms' man cave. Greta spots the dress he stole, and it appears as though Brahmsy has been using it like an anime pillow. She then finds the letter the Heelshars left, and is shocked to learn that this is what they had planned all along. Malcolm believes he's found a way out, so they head in that direction. There we go, the way out! Greta struggles to open it, and Brahms is quickly approaching. Malcolm volunteers to stay behind and fight for her safety. Heh, <laughs> simp. Despite likely being an avid watcher of Japanese cartoons, Brahms is pretty strong. Meanwhile, Greta manages to escape, but as she flees, Brahms warns that he'll kill Malcolm if she doesn't come back. Yeah, I think I'm good. And that's the end of the movie. Just kidding. Apparently, Greta has a heart of gold, so she returns. She greets Brahms and says, See, I promise I'd never leave you. Now it's time for bed, Brahms. Follow the rules. He falls for her act, and as she tucks him into bed, he asks for a kiss. <laughs> she can't bring herself to do it, so Brahms gets angry. <laughs> okay, fine. She kisses him, and then penetrates. <laughs> Brahms counters with a yeet. God, he's strong. As he squeezes the life out of Greta, she jabs the knife in deeper. Eventually, he succumbs to his wounds, and Greta saves Malcolm. The pair drives off, and the film ends with a still-living Brahms repairing his doll. Oh, by the way.